Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, welcome to the Awesome Cast, the show where we talk tech, get geeky, and uh, talk about all the nerdy things here uh, from people that actually live and work with this kind of stuff in Pittsburgh, PA, for the most part. Uh, I'm Mike Sorg, at Sorgatron on the Twitter, uh, here in the Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. With me, uh, back in his uh, Chilla Studios in Dormont, PA, is John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitter. Hey, how's it going? And I, f- I feel like uh, Katie today, I actually have many many phones now (laughs) wow so you so you can pick pretty much any phone and i actually have a device to test with from windows apple and samsung the android device nice but we'll get to that later all right also back with us from uh dutter's studios up in mount washington somewhere (laughs) Actually, i'm extra remote i'm up in edinburgh today edinburgh i don't even know where that's at (laughs) That's outside Newcastle. Oh, okay. Like, oh, you're I'm on the, the home Mama Dutter's crib. Oh, I see. I see. Oh, are we? Are we? Um, are are we uh, propped up on the uh, the cat tree again? <laughs> yes, we are. Fantastic. <laughs> And also joining us, uh, someone I've had the fortune to do uh, a couple of uh, shoots and uh, podcasts with over at Seclair.com. Some great conversations happening over there. Is Matt Keener uh, joining us tonight from Emote.com? How you doing, sir? Awesome. Doing great. Awesome. And uh, we'll get into what you're doing over at Emote in a, in a moment. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, this is the AwesomeCast. You can find us at AwesomeCast.net. You can email us, AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com. Hit us up on Twitter at AwesomeCast. Or find AwesomeCast on the uh, Facebook and Google+. Plus. I'm going to say the name of the show as many times as I can, apparently, this intro. Um, you can also su- subscribe to us on uh, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. And join us every Tuesday night at live.awesomecast.net at around about 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, or you'll just get some weird kind of movie conversation that we're wrapping up. Um, but you can join us in our wonderful new chat room that I'm checking out here. Uh, I think we might stick with this one after our, our, our dropout of our, our chat room last week. Um, it got a little weird. got a little weird. Is, so, it, is the chat room out there? The chat room's there. It's in there. On live.sorgatron? On live.sorgatronmedia.com. If you go to the site... There's, it's, there's actually a little chat room tab on the right. Uh, and yeah, I know. I need to kind of put a little bit of a visual cue. It's again, like the, I only had a little bit of time to install something new and give it a shot. And um, and this is what we ended up with. Um, it, it was something called Barco, I believe. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I will, it, we'll play with it a little bit and hopefully it'll be an awesome thing of the week here in the near future. So um anyways so let's get started with our awesome things of the week uh matt uh this is a this is a you, what you're doing over at emote is something that i've been hearing about for a while uh of, of course um, um tell us a little bit what, what you're doing there yeah sure so um so we started off with this idea that you can measure emotion mm-hmm. and um my co-founder Johannes was, uh, uh, he's at the University of Pennsylvania and um, coming from a background in particle physics of all things and uh, taking sort of the, the math and physics based approach to understanding uh, how particles move in space to understanding how, uh, basically to understanding Twitter as a start. <laughs> so bit of a jump, but um, began to look at at language analysis and how how do you um, tease apart language to understand sort of the underlying structure of of people's emotional state and how that changes in time. Um, So with with that sort of as our background and and where we're coming from, um, moved into looking at different ways that, that this could be useful basically and not just some sort of, you know, theoretically interesting thing, um, but actually helping people in the day to day. So we've gone through a couple different iterations of, of that. And 
um, explored a couple different areas. And lately, um, uh, about five months ago, really hit upon an area where um, it seems to be a big, uh, a big issue and a big problem and that people are looking for help with, which is that like, you know, over half of our waking hours are spent at work and a lot of our time is spent uh, in communication, written communication, like email at work or uh, chatting at work uh, through, you know, platforms, um, uh, you know, messaging platforms, I am. And um, what we've been doing is using our ability to sort of measure emotional state um, towards teams looking to better understand the emotional um, sort of the emotional impact of their work or see how different divisions in a company are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we've been, um, yeah, so that's what we're, that's what we've been up to is, is helping people at work better understand the emotional engagement of their teams mm -hmm. and um, just sort of going full steam ahead with that. Awesome. Now, now I, I, uh, I think I got to check out, uh, if I recall, a, a, an early version of what you guys were doing when, when, when I first ran in, with, into uh, Seclair. Um, yeah. and, and, and I liked it because it was a, kind of that thing where you checked in every once in a while and you kind of said, you know, okay, how I feel? Am I happy? Am I sad? Am I, am I, am I upset about something? Am I angry? And, and it kind of tracked where am I at, you know, you know, uh, you know, and, and kind of said, what are the stressors in my life? Right. And it looks like you've kind of really taken that a step forward uh, from what I'm seeing on the site there. Um, and I, and I, so I, I like how you're kind of applying this to kind of uh, the business world uh, in this sense. Yeah, thanks. And, and it was, um, you know, it was a bit of a weird shift for me because I'm used to, you know, I'm a psychiatrist and, mm -hmm. and used to working with individuals one on one. Um, and, it, and it initially did begin with that more, uh, you know, I, I think it's important for people to have a not, not only important to, for people like to feel like they have a say and um, but, but literally, like I to to understand how people are doing, uh, requires uh, an an element of of self report, right? Mm -hmm. Like I know there was a lot of interest in biometrics and other ways of assessing emotion, but uh, but I think a person's words and a person's voice and, and how they say and believe they're doing is is a huge part of that and primary part of that, and so. Um, but it's a pain in the butt, right? To have to like rate how you're doing or continuously check in or remember to do this thing. And so like a more passive background, set it and forget it approach where, um, you know, there can be this thing running in the background that's delivering the same insights and, mm -hmm. um, was, uh, was an element that, that my co-founder really, uh, gravitated towards, and help steer us in that direction of something that is more just passive, um, but still helpful and still, um, uh, yeah. It sounds like what you need uh, in the long run, and, and, you know, again, we're not there yet, but it's kind of like a digital mood ring, kind of a Fitbit for, for, for your, 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 your emotions, yep. right? Is that what we're looking, like, hopefully to get to at some point? Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, um, yeah, and so the, um, and this, um, you know, there's, a, there are, um, much like you might ask me like, Hey, how you feeling? You know, and I, I'd say great or awesome. Um, but then if you saw me and I was like, you know, totally like fidgeting and agitated and shifting in my seat and like it provides a different, um, a different angle on, on what's going on. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to come to uh, an understanding of emotions from from these multiple different angles, um, and one of which could be a, a physical approach, but um, uh, as a as a more nuanced way, we're actually finding that that language analysis can be a more helpful uh, more helpful in and also provide some of those same physical metrics. So, so um, I, I, I'm seeing on the site here, so you're actually, like, through your system, you can actually analyze emails, uh, text, and other social media correspondence, and you're actually kind of getting the mood out of it? 
Yep, that's right. Interesting. So, for instance, the product that we're doing, uh, the product of moat that we're doing with with companies and organizations is um, it does just that. So it, it pulls in email and then pulls out the different emotional signals from within the correspondence and then provides some sort of higher level metrics around around that to understand things like, you know, energy levels or uh, social social warmth and agreeableness, things like dominance uh, or passivity in people's uh, communications. Um, yeah. So straight, straight, uh, solely from, solely from text. Mm -hmm. that, that's really cool. So, so you can pull that from, from email and text and, and things like that. Um, where I work, one of the things we work with a lot is, is form based response and, and things like that, like a user form where someone posts a question and then a bunch of people chime in almost like a topic on Facebook or, or something along those lines. Do you have a way to measure? Cause, cause we're, we're where I work. It, we're, we're, we heavily weight engagement and how we can engage employees because um, yeah. it seems like engaged employees are a lot more productive. Um, so exactly. in that, can, can you do the same thing in, in other systems or in like some kind of, I don't want to call it a chat cause it's really not, it's really not a live chat, but it's more of a, someone posts a topic or a question or, or whatever in a forum and then other people comment. Um, is there a way to, to kind of gauge that in there too? Or is it just solely, you, you have to take in larger quantities, like an entire conversation in, in a text or an email or something like that? Yeah, no, that's an awesome, awesome question. Yeah, that's that's what we're, um, one of the cool, when I mentioned with Johannes and, and his work based in, uh, in Twitter, you know, he really um, had cut his teeth on shorter, short form communication. Uh, you know, tweets, messaging, and um, and in fact, just published a uh, just published a study last month where, um, and you guys might have come across it, but showing that um, Twitter at a at a countywide level, Twitter predicts heart attack deaths um, better than like the traditional risk factors. Right? Wow! Like, yeah, and it was uh, and it was actually the. The what they the signal they found that, that predicted that was um, anger, in in particular, sort of high levels of expression, negative emotion, um, and so yeah. So even from these shorter communications, now mind you, it, it's it's not necessarily a going to be a one to one, right? Like um, you get a you get a, a text that said, like I killed it, right? Like that that might register a temporary blip depending upon what you know what version of the software we're using um but uh be, and specifically because it registered this this sort of the word kill which typically will have negative connotations unless it's counterweighted or oh, wow. you know sort of put in context mm -hmm. but yeah that's the kind of that's the kind of thing we're, we're working towards because the um uh you know, and the, and the architecture of the system will be able to, you know, pulls in regardless of, of source. You, know, you just have the text, um, uh, but um, that you know, we're finding a lot of work in companies happens exactly like you say, John. Like it's happening, you know, it's in the sidebar, right, where, where that the real communications are happening, and you have this nuance of back and forth and response and who's responding and who's not responding and it is that engagement right, that, that like people are realizing is um uh you know that employers are, are um you know look looked at from one way you have employers uh trying to utilize engagement but but i i kind of like i view it from the other side which is that you know employees want to be engaged in their work and often the you know they're they're trying to voice uh, you know emotions often become a way of voicing these concerns in, at times in, in structures perhaps or power structures or hierarchies or corporations that that they're not even sure where you know where do you um, uh, 
you know, there's channels for communication, right? And, and mm-hmm. sometimes emotions are a way of, uh, it's like the smoke that will drift across communication lines and often can be a real helpful uh, and effective way of, of, of making one's needs met. Um, and so in a sense, we're kind of like a, um, an emotional smoke detector in some ways, both for mm-hmm. bad and for good, right? And sussing out these hot spots and saying, um, you know, hey, we're not gonna, we're not gonna tell you, uh, you know, we're not gonna tell you that it's Debbie on Monday here, and we're not gonna go in and point a finger and say, mm-hmm. you know, Debbie's a real downer, she's pulling down the team. You know, that's not what I set out to do and go into medical school. Yeah. Um, uh, but at the same time, we will provide a more higher level look, saying, um, you know. We're not sure what's going on, but but the smoke detector is kind of going off in this division here, and it appears like there's some real issues around, you know, power and control. You know, does that? And this week it was here. You know, this week it was a ten. Last week it was a fifteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's on. It's on an upward trend. It's on a downward trend. It's interesting too that you you can you can kind of add. I don't know what you, I don't don't remember what you refer to it as kind of like a score modifier based on the whole, I killed it um, and taking connotation. Cause that's one thing that I've heard is big in even, I don't want to say surveillance, but in in regulated environments like banks um, Mm -hmm. there, there's definitely word combinations that then trigger, um, you know, should we investigate this for insider trading or, or, or things of that nature? Um, mm-hmm. So it's really cool how you can how you can do that. Now, do you have ways as maybe some kind of catchphrase catches on? Can you wait it higher for a period of time and then wait it lower as like the 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 novelty of the phrase potentially <laughs> wears off, or is it something that's more static over time? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I mean, th- th- these are all things we're in the process of, you know, trying to bake in as we're developing the solution. Um, so it's a great question. Right now, that's not baked in, um, but but it it easily could be, and it's the kind of thing that, like, yeah, because right, because there's a developmental, um, uh, you know, there's a, a time course and fluctuation of language, gender mm-hmm. differences. Um, and I, I, I like that. Um, I, I'm curious what uh, what you, you mentioned in your workplace. What is the, the workplace like? What type of environment? It's a financial industry. Yeah. So that, that's I kind of I kind of know about the regu- a little bit about uh, regulated markets and, and mail. I said I don't want to call it surveillance, but from a mail I, like a, a Series Seven trader has to have legally is bound to have their mail. Um, monitored yeah. for so many years and things of that nature so that's right and in, in that case like there's a lot of there's a lot of work that goes into like what you're talking about in waiting certain phrases and certain words that can then trigger back-end events to make sure that a, a bank isn't doing something that they're not supposed to be doing uh, not maybe not necessarily the bank but the employees at the bank so yeah I, it's a different uh, right it's a different threshold and in fact it's it's um the, there's um, there's two broad areas uh, our company is is focusing in, um, and with sort of different products and different um, uh, levels of granularity, different levels of scrutiny, different levels of um, well, both have the same sort of high level of security, but both. Uh, uh, sort of just different levels of. Um, yeah, granularity, I'd say. And, and by that, I mean, um, so there is uh, there is the more, um, like, like at its core, both are looking at emotional engagement in employees. Uh, mm-hmm. And the one is more, uh, the, the, the one product, Emote, is what I've been mentioning in terms of being more uh, around um, companies looking to promote cult- culture, Right, so culture is the new status symbol, um, and you know we're not going in to say there's you know it's sort of the emotional smoke detector in this region, for better or for worse. Um, the other the other product line 
is, um, and my partner's driving, he's a, he's a lawyer who had previous experience in this type of thing and sort of regulatory compliance, sort of higher uh, in those industries that are more tightly regulated and actually the, the different rules of the game, right? You don't show up for work at, uh, at um, uh, you know, if you work for, if you work at Twitter, let's say, you're not showing up for work expecting that every email you send is going to be poured over. You're mm -hmm. Goldman Sachs, you know, like, that's just the rules of the game. And so um, we actually have a separate product that's, that's literally focused solely in that area in sort of areas of high regulatory uh, risk and working with financial firms are on the hook for FINRA and SEC regulatory you know, at a different level of, of analysis. Um, that exactly that kind of thing. And that the emotional analytics in that space um, is not yet being deployed um, to protect the companies in a way that, that we think it will be. That's really cool. It seems like this takes takes a lot more into account over time. Uh, one of the things that I see at a lot of different companies is they use um, Gallup surveys or they use something like that, where they, they try to management may try to to modify their scores by by engaging with their employees leading up to a survey. It seems like this this can take place a lot more over time, which which seems to be give to me would give a, a much truer score. Um, and peaks and valleys over the year, things of that nature. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. The the um, you know, it's easy to have a have a three sixty report. You know, sort of cram for the three sixty report, or um, you know, get in under the wire on certain um, evaluations. But if if things are being captured on the fly, real time, every minute, every day, and and being compiled towards different developmental trajectories people have or different baselines it's uh, we think it provides a, a better picture yeah very cool excellent excellent so um so are you uh, at this point i know you've been kind of at different states here are you readily available to businesses at this point we are we're working with about 10 pilot companies right now okay um and where um, you know they can they can contact us through through a moat uh, you know info at emote dot com e m o d t um, and yeah and we're and we're looking for you know at, at this point as as mentioned there's kind of two co types of companies we're working with both of whom are focused on uh, employee culture and, and and emotion in that role but there's we're, there's those sort of culture forward companies. That are putting money into people operations and and sort of uh, better supporting their their folks on the ground, and then uh, on the other sort of more on the cultural protection side, uh, companies that are finding themselves um, you know wishing to better ensure that they're meeting regulatory compliance these changing standards and mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah so uh, we're we're working with with both. Excellent. Excellent. It's been really interesting. You know, the conversations uh, have, have helped record, I guess, over the last few years with you and, uh, and and some of your talks, you know, a lot of lot of stuff. I really like to see this connection on, on trying to get that extra perspective on, on emotion and, and technology there. Um, if you guys want to check out more about this, um, the, uh, Ma Dr. Matt Keener has some great talks. Uh, of, of friends over at Seclair, uh, youtube.com slash Seclair video has a, a talk from uh, last year's Lifestyle Medicine Conference, as well as uh, TEDx Grandview, I believe it is, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, those were, those were, that was a, that was awesome conference um, that you guys put together. Um, and, uh, you know, in fact, part of, uh, Michael, part of, your work with Claire has been, um, uh, you know, I've been I've been looking to and sort of seeing how I'm modeling out, um, you know, some of what we're doing with uh, not only Emote but also with my clinical practice and mm -hmm. and the sort of all the different ways you're using technology to increase communication and 
connection so it's uh mm-hmm. it's similarly it's been it's been great to continue working with yeah, you. yeah it's been great to having you on there for conversations i know we've been uh kind of like what we do here on tuesday nights at Seclair. we we on every monday we've had people coming in over google hangout doing some stuff and i think uh we had you on if i'm not mistaken it was after the franklin uh regional incident right uh in, yeah. in the area and we yeah, we're talking right. and i think we had you on talking about kind of uh emotion and violence uh and, and having to deal with that and having to go back to that so yeah yeah that was that was um that was uh dense you know it was an emotionally <laughs> like yeah you know because i think the, the the topic had been um from what I recall, the topic had been set pretty close to something in that area, and then it happened. And so mm-hmm. it was. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you guys do a do a great job of of gently, but also uh, you know, probingly looking into some some really important questions. The, the, we're trying. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's great. But uh, yeah, go check out if you want to check out any of that stuff. It's at seclair dot com and uh, of course mode dot com. Check out what Dr. Matt Keeter is doing as well, and of course find any of those videos online. So uh, if you don't mind, if you stick around, and I'd love to get your commentary. I, I know you got at least one app to, to share here uh, as part of the show here, Matt. So uh, yep. all right, let's go around the horn on some other awesome things of the week. Uh, let's get started with uh, Dutter, since we haven't had you on in a couple of weeks. I know you got to have Hi. something really cool and fresh here. Uh, it's Poto. Poto. <laughs> Poto. Poto is a stick anywhere camera. Um, essentially, it's kind of the anti selfie stick. They're on Kickstarter now. They've already surpassed their goal. What it is, it's this little 8 megapixel camera, mm-hmm. and you can stick it to any surface. It's got like a sticky, they've created a, a sticky um, something, stickiness. And um, it's actually something where you can clean it and rinse it off, and it'll be good again. You don't, never have to replace it. Uh, it sticks to any surface, it takes up to two hours of video. Hmm. And, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of like the anti-selfie stick. So if you want to take a picture of yourself or somebody else, it uh, connects to your uh, phone and Bluetooth. So you can take a picture. Look how it's going to look beforehand and then take the picture. Um, it makes anything into a photo booth is one of their major ticks, too. <laughs> you have some fun with something like this. Um, <laughs> the one cool thing that I noticed on here, it takes time-lapse videos. Yeah. So you can, like, mm-hmm. stick, it in, stick it in a window. And get like traffic patterns or like you see all those really cool looking time lapse videos that that that's awesome i also look at for it if, if you're giving a presentation or something and you mm-hmm. there's nothing there's no way to record it really um i do a lot of demos with my phone so i can't necessarily sit there and, and use my phone to record but it, this seems like the perfect the perfect tool to do that Nice. It's not very big. It's 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 it's, it's maybe a little bit bigger than an Apple TV. It looks like, yeah. <laughs> to be honest, it looks smaller than an Apple TV. Mm-hmm. It fits. Look at it in his hand. I mean, it's. I don't even know. It's like the size of a of a almost like a the power brick for charging an iPad. Well, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. That's cool. That's it's cool. seventy nine dollars right now. Seventy nine dollars. That's through the uh, Kickstarter. Yeah. I imagine it's going to be like pretty much webcam kind of quality, mm-hmm. probably. We're seeing eight megapixel. Eight right? megapixel. That's, 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 that's not bad. Scale. That's not bad. A, and it's got a um, not a flash, but uh, an LED light around it. Nice. So you can check that. That's out. more so that people know that you're recording, because I could see this right. someone going in somewhere, sticking this up on a wall where no one's going to notice it, and then recording. Yeah, yeah, I can see <laughs> that. I can see <laughs> that. <laughs> Check those bathrooms, um, but uh, yeah. So so what? So for seventy nine dollars, you can get one. Um, they they're at seventy three thousand dollars of their fifty thousand dollar goal. So it's going to happen with forty eight days left. So uh, pretty much, yeah. if you want to snag one of these things, it's going to be. And I I know people kind of debate the whole like using Kickstarter as a pre order or a product or as a shop, I guess. Um, but I think that's fine, especially since I don't think there's been too 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 many. Uh, uh, groups that have really kind of taken advantage of that, you know. So, um, like, yeah, I feel pretty confident in, in snagging one of these. Mm-hmm. Excellent, excellent. Chilla, you got something about furniture here. So, one of the things that um, IKEA's announced 
Um, hold on, hold on. Can I point? Building... Wait, 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 wait. Can I point out this website? <laughs> are you a uh, frequent purveyor of geeksaresexy.com? Or, I'm sorry, dot <laughs> net. Uh, yes, see, I you, am. you even corrected me, so. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's one of my daily reads, honestly. Really? Um, I, yeah. Is this one I should be adding to the list? I it, it seems like they cover some more niche topics like this that may not hit. Like I I I, I hit the Engadget for for the general tech topic, mm -hmm. and then I hit I hit um, some like nine to five Mac and I more and the Mobile Nations Network and stuff like that. This seems this geeks are sexy. It seems to hit more topics like this that are more broad based but they also hit a lot of pop culture comic book what happened on shield kind of thing too so awesome. it, it's kind of the all about catch-all for things that i probably wouldn't have picked up that's specifically for mac or android or or even some of the more like general more popular tech that, like, like i, I said this like i end be... up on when john claude van damme meets my little pony but yes, <laughs> <laughs> they do some cool stuff with how to do cosplay and, and, and whatnot. But, but, but this topic, but your topic, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to divert you, <laughs> but I just couldn't get, I, guess, no, okay. I just couldn't get past that website. Geeksaresexy.net. If you want to read as Chilla does. <clears throat> I just like that. It's a dot net. <laughs> <laughs> you probably don't want to go to the dot com on here. I'm, I'm just, just be safe. <laughs> The, the, the thing that I, I saw this, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. What a gimmick. And then the, the more and more I thought about it, so, so IKEA is going to build in wireless charging capabilities into some of their furniture, whether it's nice. a, a, a lamp or a desk or, or whatnot. And I was like, meh, whatever. Okay, next, next article. And then the more I sat and read some other articles, I was thinking, wait a minute. So you're telling me that because I have an Ikea desk that I'm actually sitting at right now, that I could just put my phone down on my, on my desk or on the corner table when I get home from work or on the nightstand next to the bed, and there's no wire. And it, to me, this makes a lot more sense than, okay, I went and bought this little charge mat or charge pad for me to take and place my device on to me being built into the piece of furniture just takes it to the next the next step from my perspective because the ease of use right i'm, I'm not going to have to yes you're going to have to outfit your house so mm -hmm. every piece of furniture where you're going to set down a, a, a mobile device um could potentially charge off of it and then i thought well think about it if they put multiple pads of these in the desk and your laptop could use this and your phone and your tablet. And, and to me, it just makes it that seamless way to charge a device. Um, the, the other thing that I was thinking, and I, I think they did a pretty good design thing, at least from the lamp perspective, um, the charge cord is built into the same cord that powers the light bulb and the lamps. So it's not like you have two wires running off this stand or whatever. Now in the, in the nightstand or in, the, in a corner table, um, obviously you're gonna you're gonna have a cord that then comes off of that device. Um, but I don't know. It, it, to me, it's just it definitely solves a need, hmm. and I could see a lot of people wanting to put these in very specific places in their house. One, one of the things I'm hoping is that we see over time is someone uh, more companies do this right because not everyone may shop at ikea but to me i think it, the, the cost differential comes in at like 22 dollars that's not bad. so that's not for, bad for, to put that kit in yeah. a piece of furniture it's, it's definitely worth it because that what the, that's what needs to have kind of like what happened on tvs in 3d it's just everywhere you buy a tv you have right. it right uh, you buy I, I buy a lamp and i can charge my phone you know it just becomes connected you know until the point where it's widespread enough that apple finally puts it in their phones right um mm -hmm. and somehow does it better than everybody else i guess but um but no no i think that's really cool it, it, it is are there like designer brands uh above ikea doing anything like this not that I have, not that I've seen that that don't involve some kind of 
charge mats or right. it, it's not built into the product. And, and that's where I think this, this solves the design issue of, okay, I have a corner table and now I have this, this bump sitting across it and a right. wire running off of it. That's where I, I think they've, they've taken into account. I haven't seen any, mm-hmm. um, what was that? What was that website that, we used to make fun of that was um it was uh it was someone from apple's favorite website the fancy the fancy yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> fu- fuzzy uh uh fuzzwad used to used to always connect stuff on the fancy and i got it was one of the very, the very few sites that were actually connected to google class early on <laughs> i think it's the fancy.com so it, like which is um um super chic geeky things i guess you could say um i can't even type the name of this it, it, it's it's just fun to just kind of list a bunch of stuff that you'll never be able to afford like apparently uh the first thing i see welcome to the fancy um guy in a what is this like a motorized skateboard golf cart thing i don't yes. even know what what this is um but yeah just the most ridiculous and then pizza for some reason. I think it's. I think it's gonna. It's, it's a towel. Place. It's a beach towel. Oh, it's a beach towel. It's a pizza beach towel. It's a pepperoni pizza go. beach towel. So it's, it's probably a little bit more affordable. Um. So yeah, look at that thing. Who's gonna buy? I mean, yeah. Who's gonna buy that? It's like, it's a golf cart. Mm-hmm. But it, like, it's not. It doesn't look maneuverable enough to be a skateboard thing. This has got to be a Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> With lots of motion blur. Actually, no, I can I, I can actually see the motion blur on it now. Um, that's completely <laughs> a Photoshop. Um, and I don't even have a good monitor. I can see it. Uh, <laughs> it's it, it, it's like Pinterest for for the ridiculous. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, so uh, my awesome thing of the week, uh, livestream.com. Um, it's it's kind of a higher end, you know, doing what, you know, we're just using YouTube live here to stream this stuff and then uh, backup channel that I'm not paying for on Ustream, right? Uh, but livestream.com is kind of a more professional kind of system for that. And somebody brought this to my attention. Um, they have a broadcaster mini device. And of course, I'm going to pick up the video thing, right? Um, this little red box apparently just attaches to any camera that happens to have an HDMI port. So everything from like a $3,000 prosumer camera, like I'm, I'm, you know, lugging around uh, with my Sony FX1000 to like the little hard drive camera that you can get from uh, Best Buy. As long as that thing has that HDMI port that you typically would just kind of plug right into a TV, you can stream from this device directly to the service. Now the service, it's interesting, but again, the service is a little pricey. It starts at like $40 a month and that's after you pay a year and it's like a hundred bucks a month otherwise. So this is more of a purely professional higher end kind of um, situation here, but pretty cool that you could just attach this to anything and, and have kind of a higher end stream. Yeah, we can use our phones and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And I love that we do have this option and, and I love playing with ideas of how we do this. Um, but you know, b- d- there's something to have in that one big camera. And I, I'd love to look in this a little more and see like, to what extent can we like pull maybe multiple cameras and do something with that? Uh, if you were to play with the service a little bit and actually their, the, their service actually streams directly to an iPhone and Android uh, application on, on your phone. It's like they have, they have their own live stream app that'll do that. I think, I feel like we've had live stream on here before um, in regards to their app talking about that before but uh pretty cool tech thing and maybe maybe there'll be other versions list that we could use maybe with like a actually there are little devices kind of like kind of like what you were talking about katie these little box things that will just connect directly into youtube live oh really um they were talking about it on one of the tech tv or not tech tv the the this week in tech shows um and playing the h was it an hp one it looks like the periscope Yes. Yeah, that it. weird periscope looking one. Who knows? Mm-hmm. That, that was the weirdest form factor. And, and all it does is just stream directly to YouTube live. That's it. So there's a lot of, I, I don't know like what the use case is for a lot of those kinds of things, but um, you know, you can get a little creative with it. I think it'd be a lot of fun. So, um, so our app of the week, actually our guest, Dr. Matt Keener, he, he uh, brought this to our attention this week. Can you tell me a little bit about Scannable? 
Yeah, it's funny. Well, I actually, I literally just heard about it yesterday. So I don't have like the best track record <laughs> of working with it. But um, it uh, I was talking to a colleague about, um, we got talking about getting things done, the, the sort of James Allen mm -hmm. approach to like, getting things done and uh which is which is great it's sort of like a zen approach sort of a bottom-up approach to managing stuff I've, I've read it it's very um i wouldn't be able to get half the stuff done that i do <laughs> if it wasn't for going yeah. through that and in my t task list and everything i need to read it again because i know i only grazed just a little bit off of it yeah i kind of keep i keep going back to it just as like and some people really like dive in and, and go full full guru on it and mm -hmm. which is awesome but, but for me it's just sort of like uh you know like having a simple method of how do you on the day-to-day -day, um get things done and it's not about you know it doesn't need to be about like uh this is a bit of a tangent, but it's all good. The, you know, it's like in the nineties, there was a sort of, uh, you know, Covey uh, sort of seven principles, highly effective people. And, right. and sort of right. people are talking about their overarching missions and goals and these really hierarchy, like high level stuff. But then, but then at the end of the day, it's like, where do you pay? Like, how do you, like there's your life gets filled with all these little tiny pieces of paper that aren't really tied to the fact that you're into, you know having more agency or more integrity in your life it's like i just need to process these little stupid pieces of paper that are filling up my pockets and like i lost another ticket and then i get the you know uh, there's a fine because i you know just all this little stuff right it's how do you um so anyway so that's getting things done is more about that but talking to a colleague uh who actually had trained in in that methodology and actually worked with James Allen and stuff. And uh, just yesterday, he was saying, "Oh, you gotta, you know, you should check out this this app, Scannable." So I, I downloaded it yesterday, mm -hmm. and it's awesome. It's um, so what it is is it's um, uh, I have it on my iPhone, but uh, it's from Evernote. So they who has a track record of um, you know from at least what I understand of playing well across multiple devices um and basically it's a it's a little handy iphone app that um you point it at a uh any document it could be a business card post-it note sticky doc it sort of does takes a high-res picture automatically imports it and then gives you options for um how you manage that and where you send it um so, uh, you know, I'm looking at the screen here right now, and it's offering me options of, I just scanned a, a memo that someone had and imported it really quickly, pretty like great resolution. Um, and I just have an iPhone 5, it's not, a, mm -hmm. it's not the 6. Um, but, you know, the option to mail it, to Evernote it, you don't need an Evernote account. Um, I have one from like, God knows how long ago that I never use uh, mail message export it um, and uh, yeah so it, it just kind of it's one of these things that seems to like um, do one thing but do it pretty well Mm -hmm. Evernote's been really good about this. I actually use Evernote myself for uh, you know receipts for my business bills, stuff like that. Um, it was funny as you mentioned that I'm pulling receipts out of my pocket to play with this thing. Um, but but it, it, it does a pretty admirable job of of kind of taking the picture in a certain way that it'll OCR it, and I can search for oh I need to find that receipt from the meal we did at Denny's, right? And it'll actually search Denny's. Um, but I like this plan. I had actually installed this and forgot about it a couple weeks ago, apparently. Um, <laughs> but it actually does like a look for the document, um, which I, I very uh, Citizens Bank their their check mobile deposit does very similar to this, where it actually kind of draws an outline and looks for it. Um, and it'll and I have kind of a crumpled up receipt, so I was having a little trouble with it. But it'll find like half of it and, and start to try to take a picture of it. So so maybe not having these um, folded up receipts in your pocket for an extended period of time is a good idea with this application. But probably you know, it looks like it's more kind of. You know, they're saying uh, business cars, you know, stuff like that, um, which, you know, it just having that moment to like, OK, I go in, I got to take the picture. OK, did that picture take? All right. It looks like it's pretty good about 
having that like direct response and 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 that you know kind of ready for you so yeah and it says in the, when i up i haven't tried it on a business card and i'm curious to do that right now because because one thing it it's it like uh it it shows the picture in their in their uh on the login, it shows a picture sort of of somebody taking a business picture of a business card and then it being automatic, like kicking over to LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious if it actually does that or if that's just a sort of. They had a business card app that that did that and linked everything over to LinkedIn. And it was, it was specifically just for business cards. And I wonder what happened with that. Um, because it, it was one of those where you only had so many and they're like, oh, you have to become a premium user in order to use it more, I guess. Um, yeah. and that, and that I, actually worked extremely well. So I'm interested to see how that, that works. Like what, because, does, what does this do differently? Right. Or, or am I, am I going to get caught in the same catch 22 where, okay, I'm, you get five a month or whatever it was. And then after that, you have to start paying, which that was actually one of the things that almost got me to sign up and pay for Evernote was the business card card scanning feature. Yeah, it, this because because it added it into your contacts, it took a backup photo and uploaded it into Evernote, and then it pulled all of their additional information from social network from LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So, if this is if this is a, an update to that, I'm gonna probably look at this again because I think it is that mm -hmm. that yeah, I just yeah I just took a picture of a card and it um, automatically kicked me to the uh, to the login screen saying like you know, sign in for Evernote plus LinkedIn and um, mm -hmm. it, it automatically saw that it was a business card. So it, it seems like that's, you know, this is sort of the next, the, the next step they're taking to integrate those two or whatever, uh, which is a pretty cool feature. I mean, I, I get what you're saying about almost considering it like, you know, to sign in, I've got like a huge stack of cards literally right here. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh, well, you know, they just sit in my bag until I, you know, they make it somewhere else. And, yeah. or, or you need one and then you're going through and, okay, where was that? Where was that? Where was that? It, mm -hmm. it just makes it so much more searchable. And that's really? where, to me, paying for their service, it's if you meet a lot of people or work with a lot of people that are exchanging business cards, it's it's almost worth worth. Evernote's worth it just for that. Mm -hmm. For me, it's just like getting rid of that pile of papers on my desk. Just mm -hmm. like, okay, we'll put it in here, put it here, throw it all away because I know it's up in there. And, and again, it, like my volume isn't big enough that I need to pay for it at this point. But if I had that volume, I and I was for a while paying was it five bucks a month? Because um, I think it just limits yeah, you. Five bucks a month. It limits you to so many hundred megabytes, I think, a month. Mm -hmm. But if you're only doing like receipts every once in a while or, or business cards, um, if you're just a light user, but it's one of those things where they keep putting apps out like this that get you to want to use it more, and then it, you know they bring you in. Which I think it's worth it. I think it's a great service, especially if you do just organizing your life, getting things done. I was reading something about somebody doing show notes for podcasts uh, and sharing documents that way, kind of like how we're using Google Documents on this show um so so scannable um i think it's just evernote.com slash product slash scannable if you want to check it out or look up scannable in the uh, app store it's the thing under evernote so uh thanks for sharing that so yeah. At this point, uh, hey, want to give a shout out to our friend Slice on Broadway. Um, they've been supporting, uh, of course, not everybody got in the studio today because it's pretty icy out there. Um, but uh, the, we've had some pretty good nights here getting people in studio. So it's, it's the best way, even though it's great we can do this over technology. Um, and they've supported the shows and the podcast, the, the guests coming and visiting Beachview here in Pittsburgh, PA uh, with uh, Great Pittsburgh Pizza for podcasting. You can check them out, sliceonbroadway.com. Um, like I said, they're up here in the Beachview area, right along the tracks um, in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. And they also have another location in Carnegie, PA on Main Street. Some great gourmet pizza, 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 excuse me, not peaches, uh, from scratch. And, and uh, uh, they, they, they self-proclaim to have an abnormal obsession with pizza. They're perfectionists. And I like eating perfection. Uh, also, I understand they were featured on uh, KDKA. Uh, they have many awards uh, with some local um, um, publications and news. Uh, WP Excites 2012 pizza, pizza, Pittsburgh's Best Pizza. There's a lot of peas. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> so go check them out. Uh, follow them uh, at, at 
PGH underscore Slice on Twitter and Slice on Broadway on Facebook and Instagram. It will make you hungry, I promise, and let them know that the awesome cast sent you. All righty, let's get into some of the tech news of the week with what little time we have left. Um, oh, geez, what's the top two stories? We got so much. <laughs> <laughs> which, so, so what's your what's your thoughts on Google Plus splitting out photos? Oh, screen? I don't care. As long as Hangouts is still a thing. Anyway, hey, this the okay, <laughs> okay. So we have the grand experiment that is Google Plus, right? Um, their social network, their replacement. But out of it, we got Hangouts and Photos, which are amazing. Right. Mm -hmm. I dump all my stuff in there when I'm looking for a photo. I love that I can go to the Photos tab on Google Plus and I can search city. I need a picture of a city. This is really handy when I'm doing that morning show, which I just changed the name of to basic ergonomics, by the way, if you're looking for that. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I need something where I'm using a camera. So I'll put video camera and it'll give me something like that. Or I need one where somebody's wearing glasses. Like the, it's actually contextually organized my photos that are automatically uploading from my phone all the time. Cause that's where I take my pictures. And, uh, and put it, unfortunately for me, it's also putting my drive stuff in there. So all the videos like for this show are also in there. Um, so, Where are the pictures on, on what? What kind of phone? Um, I have an iPhone. And every time I go into Google Plus in the background, it will take all the pictures and actually upload them to Google Plus's photo section. Okay. And that's, but it doesn't publish them automatically. It's right? not publish them automatically. Um, I mean, yeah. much like with the Google Class, any, any photo you take on there automatically uploads to that. You can set up a, um, your Android device to do the same thing, um, and it's really nice because it's then I don't have to worry about it. It's there in the in the cloud, you know, um, and and the tools up there for editing and everything are really a lot nicer than the clunky iPhoto. And I don't know what they're going to do with photos here. Um, and Hangouts, obviously yeah. we use Hangouts how much? I just did a thing today on Hangouts for doing a presentation about Hangouts later in this month. <laughs> you know, it, 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 we, how much stuff have we expanded over on the Wrestling Mayhem Show network of shows that people just like said, hey, let's do a show and turn into a podcast. And um, and even the, you know, the people from Lipson saying, hey, you can do a podcast this way. You know, that's what we're doing when we're talking about with Seclair. We're using Google Hangout there. Um, so yeah. it was just that weak social center. And I am a little worried because some of the communities are really good. Um I'm actually getting a little a little bit of traction out of the wrestling communities for some of the videos I've been doing. And I like that it gets you comments on YouTube. And the podcasting communities have been tremendous on there. And I, I haven't found that on Facebook yet. Um, that's my thoughts. But, uh, but yeah, I guess they're making a shift. And um, I don't know, it was kind of expected at this what point. Do you, and John, what, like, it sounds like there's... Uh... I wasn't I wasn't aware that they had done that. What what are you noticing with it? Well, what, it, 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 it I think they've announced that they really haven't they no. haven't done anything with it. No. But they're talking about breaking them apart. And I'm I'm hoping to your point, Sorg, the seamlessness that is getting a photo from your drive or from photos that are automatically uploaded into Google Plus, into into all of this, getting everyone to get I mean I go to Google Plus every Tuesday night because that's where I know that's how I know how to find the hangout for the right. show. To but, me, it's the, like the I, I wish the to me the commenting engine mm -hmm. plus wanting something to me is just for some weird reason different than a like. But the fact that they have events, polls, videos, links, photos, text, it's this all in one dashboard. Right. Yeah. That. And gives if, me and if you work that if you work in it, you get into Google. Like that's right. that's the biggest thing for for businesses. When I set up a business, whether there's any interaction whatsoever, I fill that thing out because now everything that I put in that Google profile is found when I go search for that business on Google, and that gives you a lot of other outlets. Now, um, I now you mentioned about how you go to Google Plus. Now, the most interesting thing is, you know, we were having this discussion. You know, you think like, oh, well, Google. Plus should be pretty easy getting the Hangouts. It makes sense to us, right? Mm -hmm. um, how many times have we taught somebody new to get into Google Plus and use Hangouts? Because we thought that was the same way, you know. Well, and I don't mind yeah. them if they if they if they kind of break it apart and make it so you could get to 
one or the other. I look at it, so I'm going to McDonald's. I can go through the drive through or I can go into the st- in, into McDonald's to buy something. Mm-hmm. I, I'm hoping it stays that <laughs> That's where a- I can c- still come into Plus and have access to all of this in a, right. in a one stop shop. But if I want to go to hangouts.google.com, I get just Hangouts. To me, that's okay. And I think the, I agree the way the article kind of read, I, I, it made me a little nervous. Like they're not breaking it apart, are they? They're just giving you the option to consume it in, in multiple ways. From the but, art, from I, art, I, yeah, I, from I articles. Didn't, I didn't get that. From articles I've been reading, I, I think when you look at how they're developing the product, you know, Google Plus was the the the, the umbrella that you had Hangouts and Photos. Mm-hmm. But now I think they're going to become their own products. Like you will have a Google Hangouts team, not the guys that work on Google Hangout under Google Plus. Um, so I think that's it's more of just a repositioning of things a little bit. Okay. Um, you know, from out un, out from under the umbrella, but unfortunately, what does that do for Google Plus and the people using it? Well, you know, knowing their recent, you know, they killed Reader. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that says everything. I hope you didn't put too much. I mean, I it, it kills me. I was this close a few months ago from jumping in and doing all. I had started the process of getting into Help House because I wanted to try to do some of those. And actually, I'm actually come to the conclusion. I think I want to do what Help Helps provided myself with Google Hangout. Um, where you provide a service. Hey, I want to teach you this for this amount. All Help Us was doing was was creating the directory and, and the payment system for you. You can do the same thing with PayPal, right? Um, mm-hmm. It's in, in a really, really intricate instruction set. Um, so it's... Yeah, it's just... Yeah, the Google, like the... the what, and I'm glad to hear you guys say that because it's... It, the um you know i've been i've been on gmail for i don't know however long it is and 10 years and 12 something like that and you, you know i felt like i was really excited when um hangouts and google plus came around and i was kind of like oh I, it, it seemed a little confusing but it, it also seemed like uh, maybe it's just me, but <laughs> like, you know, I'm, I'm like, you know, and even getting on today, it was, um, uh, it's not, it's not necessarily intuitive and, and where you start off with, um, mm-hmm. coming in from, you know, for most people, I think is you're coming in from Gmail mm-hmm. is, is, is your sort of personal intro into Google and then, um, yeah, I'd like to see that, that better streamlined. Um, cause I'm, cause like you say, uh, Zorg, it's like, I, uh, I have a clinic that I'm opening. We're doing everything on Google. Uh, we're going to be doing Hangouts, like a lot of what you guys are doing at Seclair. And it's, um, and it's not, it's not intuitive. And like introducing people into that process, um, yeah, there's. I'm looking forward to seeing what what emerges because it's not clear. Right. I mean, that's been a lot of our our, our kind of discussion. Is like, okay, I want to be able to walk in and hit a button, and we're we're in a, in a video call. I was like, Phew, yeah, I don't know a solution for you. The closest <laughs> thing really was like when Facebook was doing video because it was like over the Skype system, but it was like, okay, I go to a page, but it was never clear when the video image would pop up to be able to call the person so i mean uh, i don't know I, you know, even tonight where we're getting ready i mean I, I you know invited you know matt here and uh and it didn't pop up and i was like okay here's the link through this you know you got to know three different ways in order to get somebody in the hangout and um it, 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 and it, i was on my right and i'm on my phone exactly and look at my phone i'm at a coffee shop and it's like okay well i can pop in here and it's popping up here but then like you know, and that's okay. mind you, that's on my end. Yeah, yeah. Like if, Wait, mm-hmm. ha, who who here? Raise your hand if you've had a call come in for this or some other hangout situation, and it has rung through on every device you're surrounded by, except for the one you actually wanted to take the call on. <laughs> Anybody else? That happened. That happened tonight. It rang. It rang on my. It rang on my tablet, mm-hmm. but not 
on this will happen i am top. surrounded by one, two, three, four, five, I have like six computers and a couple of tablets right and everyone will ring except that one that i actually want to open you on so i can get your audio uh you know it's 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 just like why why is this happening but i but hopefully if it does become its own product that will kind of get better at it but well I, the one thing you guys are missing with this is the separation between uh, the actually the, the photos and in google plus is in your drive right now, for example, I was trying to send Sorg pictures from an event. Right. And I was unable to send him pictures because Google or photos are not integrated into Drive. Right. With the separation of these two, we're supposed to be seeing an icon in Drive with our photos that we've uploaded. Which is it's, it will be a huge deal when you're trying to share things. You're not downloading something from your Google um, from your Google Plus um like we're backing up our photos there. We're not downloading things from the Google Cloud mm -hmm. and on from there into the Drive to the document. It's all but, going to be integrated into one thing. But yet when I go to photos, all my videos I put in Drive just popped up for no reason at all. And now I have all these my stories with just like all the videos from podcast day and I can't use any of them <laughs> <laughs> or, or I take some pictures from a wrestling show uh, we do over a weekend. But I also throw the wrestling show videos in Drive as sort of a backup while I'm editing it. And uh, now that story is a is is the raw footage mixed with the nice photos I took for promotional and and it gets it gets really weird but yeah a little bit of I don't know I mean I'm just the weird use case there but I mean isn't Google all about weird use cases and geeks doing doing stuff in interesting ways with their tools yeah. but mm -hmm. all right uh, let's see Mobile World Congress this weekend uh, the biggest thing I know uh, Chilla caught your eye was the S3 Samsung S six six what I say. Three. I'm sorry. I looked at that <laughs> Apple release one and took the three off of it. <laughs> oh, no problem. So, so it, it's interesting. So uh, Samsung takes another, I don't know if you want to call it step forward, step back. Some people say they're copying uh, Apple. In a way, I think they're almost copying <clears throat> Nexus, the Nexus line. Um, no more removable battery. No more micro SD card. Mm-hmm. Um, now some people will say from the Apple world, the, the glass, glass back, all metal build structure. Um, some of the interesting things I too, they, they claim that they're really trimming down touch whiz, which is, is their UI that they put on top of Android, which uh, I'll be interested to see how, how trimmed down that is. Um, and it's almost to me like they're trying to go after some of the other launchers because they're going to, and this to me is just going to cause confusion for families and people that, Oh, you have that Samsung device. I have that Samsung device. They're allowing you to theme and they're going to have themes to change the look and feel of the OS. Hmm. Um, that that's one thing that I that why I've always tried to go stock Android in most cases is because I get that what Google intended and it's all the same across the platform. Um, <clears throat> of course, they're going to have their their bundled stuff as Health, Samsung Pay. Um, they're going to have uh, some some themes: the Quick Connect, Private Mode, S Finder, S Voice. Um, sounds like they're partnering up with Microsoft, so you're going to get for buying a device, you get a hundred gig of extra OneDrive storage um, and some Microsoft apps as well. Um, so I, I don't the, the phone, the Edge device, which there it, it was, I find it interesting. So you have the Note Edge that has the beveled side of the screen that allows you to have a draggable menu where you can put quick links and you can put a stock ticker over there. You can do all kinds of stuff with the actual 45 degree of the screen over there. Um, the S6 edge is going to be an edge to edge screen with kind of that bevel look, but it didn't sound like from what I heard, you'll be able to swipe stuff out from it, but it's not going to have the links like the note edge does. Right. It's not like a functional edge. To it, it's right. more of an aesthetic edge. Uh, but by the way, I'm I'm pulling up because uh, I'm like pulling up my phone here, kind of in comparison. But man, they did go the Apple route, didn't they? <laughs> Hold on. Oh uh, no, I don't I don't have this in the right thing. Well, I'll fix this, and we'll have the the side by side in a second here. 
Um, but yeah, that looks very iPhone like there. <laughs> like, like that's scary. That's scary. But um, but it's the night. It looks nice. You, you got to be honest. It, it looks it looks really nice and slick. So, and if I guess if you got to get rid of a removable, it's features features or aesthetics. Right. Physically, when it comes to removable batteries, SD cards, and everything, it's more holes you have to put in there, and that makes manufacturing hard, right? And it, it can do 4K video recording. Damn. So. I, I you know I I believe when I see it, I'm not that I have a computer that'll run it. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of $150 Kodak, uh, uh, sport cameras that say they do HD video, but try looking at that on a big screen TV. And look, yeah, it looks bad. Yeah. The, the other thing that they're doing is they're, they've actually partnered with two of the, the major platforms or, um, standards for wireless charging. So their device will, the, the six will be WPC 1.1 compliant and PMA 1.0 compliant for wireless charging. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, it's not the, the Qi base um, charging, which is what you see in most Lumia phones and things of that nature. The, the one thing that I thought was pretty cool that you don't really get from an iPhone perspective with the edge, they're saying you can actually turn it upside down to kind of silence it from like a do not disturb mode. Hmm. But because the edge of the device bevels up on the sides, you can actually, the screen, you can assign glow colors to certain contacts. So if your phone is, is face down and it kind of has that bevel, it's going to kind of glow around the device on your table. Who's going to set um, that up? And you can assign people, like I said, specific colors, or yes, you can assign contact groups colors. So you know, mm -hmm. oh, it's glowing red. I got to, I got to make sure I take this call. But any of the other colors, it's, it's kind of optional or whatnot. Samsung has the strangest ideas sometimes about what to put in a phone. <laughs> um, uh, Dutter is speaking of strange ideas. Um, I guess I look through here and I find a GoPro on a cat. Yeah, oh, I had to send that picture to you. I figured you'd appreciate that. Yes. What this is, is we've got a, an alternative to GoPro. GoPro's pretty much kind of owned that whole market with oh, yeah. the, um, the cameras. And this new company is, um, is called, I, I'm going to totally destroy this, uh, Zai, Zayomi. Let's Sound, go with Zayomi. Sounds close enough to me. Is it Chinese or something? Uh, Has to be. Yes, it is. Um, but it's only $64, which is, a, you know, a half of what a GoPro, entry-level GoPro goes for. They go for like $130. Mm -hmm. So this is a much, much more affordable, uh, records at 1080p. Uh, what else? Oh, you know what? It may actually be, um, <clears throat> sometimes that XI is like, sh like SH. Mm. So I wonder show if it's me. like show me or like. Oh, I think it is. This is yeah, you are. You're right. This is one of those names I hear on many yeah, podcasts, yeah. but never actually yeah. see. You're right. That's it. Because right. that sounds familiar when you say that. Does it? I've, I haven't heard it before, but I, but I, I, yeah. But I. That's funny. Yeah, show me G action uh, camera. Uh, it does include a selfie stick mount for an extra eighty dollars. <laughs> oh, there the they are edition. using it. <laughs> that's the extra eighty dollars. How much is the cat mount? I don't know. Wait, we so, but the, so the stick is the stick. Just to clarify, the stick is more expensive than the camera. Probably. Well, it's a travel edition. It looks like it's an additional eighty dollars. You get a selfie stick and, on top of um, sixty. You said it's like sixty-four, right, or sixty something? Did sixty, uh, sixty-four dollars. Yeah, normally. Nice. So an additional eighty. So you're paying more for the stick if you get the stick. <laughs> That's some high quality <laughs> stick right there. <laughs> Sorry to derail. I just no, oh no, that's what we do here. Yes, <laughs> she did bring the cat photo. So let's yeah, I had just, to. That was my let's favorite be one. I said, oh, I love this cat here. So yes. yeah, you could definitely uh, get them out and strap it to your cat and see what your animals <laughs> do all day long. Yes, sleep all and right. eat. <laughs> and I want to so get a cat just to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually had a motion uh, uh, that do-it-yourself camera uh, when we went to California. I set it up in the, in the studio in the office in the front, and I, and I just watched the cat go back and forth in the studio, and I'm like, what is he doing down here? Um, but 
Anyways, uh, that so much more. I, uh, you know, uh, uh, we're touching on a lot of stuff as stories come out here through the week. We've been doing the mini awesome casts, um, but at least four days a week. Today, I talked about the VR situation. Uh, Valve uh, announced a, a, a virtual reality unit they're doing with HTC of all people. Uh, so you can check that out at youtube.com slash inawesomecast or at awesomecast.net, of course. Um, and other than that, we also uh, talk about a little bit about video game consoles, Pebble Time, uh, a little bit more about that that we I think we started talking about last week. Some stuff about the Apple Store Genius Bar. And uh, I don't really have any events coming up, Chilla. Do you? I, well, oh, hey, wait, we got an Apple Whoa. event. I'm sorry. We got to watch next week. <laughs> I, I Apparently, I'm going to find out why I'm going to throw this thing away and pay $350. It scares me when they talk about like the higher end gold versions and how they might be like five, ten grand. I think I think that's good. I, uh, it's, it's uh, well, you want to do the over under? I'm saying it's going to be well over ten, and I'm going to guess it's going to be closer to fifteen. Yeah, I'm like, so what's the cheapest I can pay? You know, it's like how much is the Mac Mini? You know, like <laughs> I, I need that level of the watch. You know, so that you're at, like the three hundred and fifty. Yeah, yeah, and it's just like even like the iPad. It's like iPad's like five hundred bucks. Like. Ah, mm, if I okay, I could swing that. <laughs> but um, but no, it will be interesting. So so we'll have that news by next week. Um, we won't be covering it live because I think I'm in a meeting directly at that time. I'm hating these Monday ones. Uh, they're mm-hmm. killing me, killing me. Um, so yeah, that's all big stuff going on there. There's nothing else. Apple announced everybody else shuts down. Basically, uh, yeah, and and, be, and it's like they swoop in after after uh, World Mobile Mobile Con- Congress, yeah, to, to, to then steal and, the spotlight over off of anything. And everybody out of and everybody's already pre-ordered their 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 Pebble and their Pebble steals and the, from the time Kickstarter, so we're all good there. Um, anyways, uh, Doctor Mac Huner, thank you so much for joining us, telling us about what's going on with Emote um and and everything going on with you uh where can people find more about uh what you're doing and and where are you on social media if they want to talk with you yeah so they can check out uh our work at emote at e-m-o-d-t as in uh originally it was emotions and digital technology so e-m-o-d-t.com um you can check me out at uh keenzai k-e-e-n-z-a-i on twitter and um while we were talking i just reserved my uh google plus name so i'm uh, uh plus matthew keener at, at google now i just have to figure out how to like integrate my other google plus account that somehow got created <laughs> oh no oh those are a mess when that happens that happens to me yeah. with youtube accounts and i just like i abandoned something because there's just no way to combine things sometimes um, yeah I'm seeing like dissociative identity in my in my future. So I'll, just, I'll just like <laughs> which man sit here in the middle of this like yeah. Yeah, so our mutual acquaintance Sven, I think he has about three accounts, and I'm like, so which one am I calling today? Um, but anyways, Katie Dudas, she's at K Dutters. She likes to read yik yaks. I do all kinds of crazy stuff. We're actually gonna try something different. We're looking for help with that, right? Yes, you we are sh- crowdsourcing our next video. Oh, man, I have all kinds of shameless self-promotion today. <laughs> um, nice. We are crowdsourcing our next video. Uh, we kind of put out a couple of tweets that uh, Will and I think we can make a whole video based upon two or three words that somebody sends us and just let the madness happen from there. You, 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 should, let people, you should let people on the iPhone, like, predictive text one of the options to, to create the three words. <laughs> It'd be amazing. Oh, well, I mean, and and for context, like uh, the, the we did like yik yak d- dating or yik yak speed dating and yik yak mm-hmm. valentines, right? So we just you know took yik yaks, they were valentines, or they were conversation and speed dating, you know, and had some fun with that. Um, so I mean, you know, something. I I guess are we looking for technically? In my mind, we're looking for something around social media, like what if Twitter was X kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, you know, like basically around tech, social media kind of thing, some kind of social platform, right? That would be best. I think that would be. The, I think that would be the most fun. Mm-hmm. Is if we could, uh, heck, if they want to give us a scenario where they say, "Hey, what if this was like in real life? If we actually acted the way we do on a certain platform? What if we tind- what if we situation? tindered in real life? Like, I, I, I don't like. So, what you run, walk up to somebody and swipe them left? Is uh, yeah. I don't know. Is a right? Right's the good one. <laughs> Left's the good one. I'm married. I haven't been on it. I swear. <laughs> um hi honey 
you know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get on kick. We'll, we got all kinds of good options here. Awesome. Awesome. Chilla, he's at Chilla on the Twitters. That's oh, correct. I thought I was done self-promotion. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. She, she has more self-promotion. <laughs> uh, we have Still City Kitty videos. Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something that we've produced through uh, Sorgatron Media, um, and it's also appeared on Bold Pittsburgh, thanks to uh, Miss Missy Sorg, or Mrs., I'm sorry, since you're now on um, swiping left and right, she's now a miss. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so we have a uh, look for that, um, but there's still City Kitty coverage. And then finally, mm-hmm. if I, um, I was just on the Scarehouse podcast, uh, talking about social media and the state of social media. Nice. And... Uh, stuff that awesome cast is doing because i like to shamelessly promote other things on other places so everywhere it's all about cross promotion right is yeah. that all is that everything yes i think that's good enough for now okay is she the studio the studio audience is asking if you're done whoring other things and now i have a cat that fetches if we want to get a camera and uh, put it on the cat chill is that chill on the twitters <laughs> <laughs> We should let Katie Katie go last because she just puts the rest of us to shame. And she's like, I do this and I do this and I, <laughs> I am here and I am there. I'm the awesomest. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can be found at, at Chilla on the Twitters, John Chilla on the Facebooks, the Google Pluses, wherever finer social media networks are found. And, and making cool stuff at Chilla Studios over there in Dorland. Yes, 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 I am. When, when possible. When babies aren't crying. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Yeah. Ride that mute button. <laughs> and of course, you guys can join us here. Record live every Tuesday around about 6 30 p.m. Eastern Time at live.awesomecast.net. Follow at Awesomecast on Twitter. Look for us on Facebook, Google Plus. Hey, I kicked together. Uh, we've, we've been having so much success with everybody else with the uh, Facebook groups. I restarted and had somebody help backdoor re admin me because I was gone and I had to approve admins, and but there was no admin because I left somehow. Uh, but look for Awesomecast Facebook group over on facebook um i'll be posting some of the stories through the week that we've been putting on the other stuff so if you want to converse in there somehow we ended up talking about beer today but look at the first brief- pizza beer and pizza it ended up which hey and then and then my sponsor gets gets randomly mentioned i love how that's become a thing now um so if anybody else wants to be random mentioned on my social media you know where to find me um you can also please subscribe to us. All the links over at awesomecast.net, iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Stitcher. Thank you very much to Michael Allen at Mike Allen PR on the Twitter uh, for helping uh, with show notes and tweets all night long. And uh, Fine Quality Stick, apparently, is the title of this show. <laughs> okay. <Ooh. laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad we didn't do that other story. Um, anyways, which we'll do some other time. Um, anyways, uh, uh, thank you to our awesome chat room. Uh, thanks for rolling with us here with our, our kind of chat room changes. Um, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. You like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out wrestlingmayhemshow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle. <laughs>